Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have five more Dollar Tree Neutral Farmhouse Valentine's Day decor pieces for you that will all go along with the DIYs that we made last week. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. To start off, we're going to make this super simple love sign. So I take this little square decor piece from Dollar Tree and I take my putty knife and pop this little heart off. I then take my white We Really Chalk paint and I give it a coat of the paint, but I do not do a heavy coat because I want that wood to be shining through. That way at the end, we don't have to distress it. So basically it's like a backwards distressing technique. I don't know what you want to call it, but I just don't like to uh, sand down my pieces all the time just because it makes such a big mess. Plus that's just one more um, step that you have to add on to your project. So if I can cut down on project time, then I definitely like to do that. So moving on, I paint this little heart with the Waverly color in ballet. It's just a very light pink color to go along with our neutral farmhouse style. I then take this little wooden heart from Dollar Tree. These are the ones you get in the pack of the multiple hearts with the stickers on the back of them but the stickers don't stick very well so I do just put a bead of hot glue on the back of that and then I also take this little arrow with the heart in the middle from that same pack I spray a little tiny bit of water on it and then I take my Waverly Antique Wax and I just paint that on. So essentially you're just making a stain, but I didn't want to make like a whole cup of this because I'm only using it for this little heart. So I did want to show you this little technique in case you want to kind of like stain something, but like I said, you don't want to make a whole cup of it. Once that was all painted up or stained, whatever you want to call it, I then just take some hot glue and I glue that down right into the middle of these two hearts. Once I had those glued together, then I take my Arteza paint pen. I believe this color is lilac and although it's a really, really light purple, it is a purpley pinkish, so it definitely still matched. And I just love Arteza paint pens because they're so creamy and they dry pretty quickly. But I did want to have the border, which is a bunch of white hearts, go along with the theme as well. I then take my antique wax and my chip brush. These are linked in my Amazon store in the description box. And I distress or dry brush the edges as well as the middle of this piece. I do the same exact thing around the heart edge or the edges of the heart as well as the edges of the inside little heart as well. Next, I just glue that right back down where it was. Once I had this glued down, then I had these little wooden letters from Walmart. They're kind of like Scrabble pieces. So I take out the letters L-O-V-E for love and then I just take the same brush that I was using and I distress the edges and around the little block as well just to make it look cohesive and that way it didn't stand out so much and that way it looked like it belonged on this piece and they're weathered and old looking. And then that was it for that, you guys. I just literally glued them down. And this was so quick and easy. This could be perfect for a tiered tray or up on a mantle. Literally, the possibilities are endless. And these are kid-friendly or you could make them if you're a beginner or an expert. It's totally up to you. Thank you. 
So if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. Now I have a little message from my little sweetie. She always sits around and pretends like she's on a YouTube video. So so she wanted to give you guys this message. Hey guys, today we're going to do a video. If you like, like it and give us a big thumbs up. Bye guys! You guys, how sweet is she? Oh my god, I love her so much. She cracks me up. Anyway, moving on to the next project. You guys love the heart that I did last week, so I figured that I would redo another one of these tinsel hearts. So to start off, I grabbed this double heart tinsel decor piece from Dollar Tree and I take all that tinsel off. I then take my jute, I put a bead of hot glue at the um, end where the two sides meet and then I just wrap my jute over a million times it really didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take it is tedious so all I did was just pop on a YouTube video and I went to town wrapping this around the one heart now where you see the two hearts meet I did just stop and then um pull my string down that part you can see what I'm doing here that way um, I didn't have so much to wrap and then the uh, yarn that I'm going to be using next I wrapped around that part since it was a little bit thicker and it's pink if you guys have been around for any amount of time you know that I love pink so much I don't use a lot of pink in my decor just because I'm into that neutral farmhouse browns grays blacks whites but anytime that I have the chance to use a light pink I definitely like to do that so anyway I just wrapped it like I said once I got to the end I cut it put another bead of hot glue that it would so that it would stay in place I then took this yarn that I got from Walmart I believe this was about two dollars for the entire roll which is not bad at all it's actually really nice material too it's really soft so if you're a crocheter um Definitely check your local Walmart. I'm sure you already know, but they have some really, really nice, inexpensive yarns. So I just do the same exact thing with this. I put a bead of hot glue and I wrap it all the way around the heart. Once I get to the end, then again, I glue that down. Next, I take my jute and for the pink side, I put a dab of hot glue and I glue the end of my jute to right where those hearts meet. I then just wrap my jute randomly around the pink heart just to make it kind of like a design like I did last week. I then do the same exact thing for the other side, but using the pink. So the pink heart has the jute and the jute heart has the pink, um, ri not ribbon, you guys, yarn. <laughs> I keep wanting to say ribbon when it's actually yarn. I'm just so used to saying ribbon, I guess. But anyway, I put a dab of hot glue on the end and then I also do reinforce those jute strings around the whole heart with some hot glue, just so that way they stay in place and they don't fall. So once I had both those sides done, then I take this it's not wood it's kind of like MDF board but it's pretty thick so it is nice quality especially for a dollar the front looks like wood but it's not completely wood but anyway I just took my staple puller I pulled the staples out from the hanger and then I took my white Waverly chalk paint and again I gave it a light coat of white Waverly chalk paint so that that faux wood would show through I then take my chip brush and my antique wax once again and I distress the edges as well as the word. I then made 
two simple bows out of the jute as well as the yarn and I glue them together. If you guys have not seen my bow tutorial video, I will leave it in the cards in the right hand corner. I show 11 different ways to make simple, easy bows, and towards the end of the video, I show you my magic bow trick. You can do perfect bows in literally seconds with smaller ribbon, yarn, um, jute, stuff like that. So once I glued my little bow down, then last but not least, I put some hot glue on the back of the love sign and I glue that down right into the middle. And look how stunning this is, you guys. It's simple, it's neutral colored, and it's absolutely gorgeous. As usual, I can't pick a favorite, so let me know in the comments down below once the video is over, which is your favorite. So moving on to this truck sign, I take two beware signs as well as a truck with the eggs. I got these trucks this year in the Easter collection and I wanted this sign to be a little bit smaller. So I took my, uh, I think that's like a level ruler and I just put it next to the truck and drew a line and then I did the same exact thing on the other side. That way I could have a little bit of space to work on each end. I then took my boards to my saw and I cut these boards down. Now, generally I have done this a million times. I will just use a utility knife. So if you don't have a saw, if you don't have a saw, do not worry about it. You don't need one. All you have to do is hold your ruler down, score these boards a few times with your knife, and then you can pop them right off. Next, I take my square dowels, which are also linked in my Amazon store. I measure out the frame, and then I cut those down as well. I then just glue these boards together with some large popsicle sticks. I used to use like a ton on the back of these and then I realized like I was really just wasting popsicle sticks. So all you really need is two running long ways on the end just to kind of reinforce the edges and then in the middle you can run your hot glue and your popsicle sticks right down the seam and it holds beautifully. I then take my mini finger sander which again is linked in my Amazon favorites and I sand the edges. You guys anytime I say it's in my Amazon favorites it's because I get a million of the same question where I got these items so I do just want to let the new people know where they can find them. Once I sanded them down then I took my Kona stain from Walmart and I stained these with a foam brush. Next, I take my truck from Dollar Tree and I just take my knife and I score right along where those eggs are. And you guys, I literally scored it like three times and it popped right off. So don't worry about it if you're nervous to do this. It was not hard to cut through whatsoever. So once I cut that off, then I took my little mini sander and I sanded down those rough edges and then gave this entire truck a good coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint. Surprise, surprise, I take my chip brush with some white Waverly chalk paint and I distress the edges as well as around all those little details on the truck just to give it some dimension and some character. I then took my sign that I did give a, like I said before, not a good coat. I want that wood to shine through like it's distressed wood with my white Waverly chalk paint and then I took my ruler again and every three inches so it's half those boards I scored lines that way it looked like weathered wood. 
So I had this Chalk Couture transfer. It goes with the Chalk Couture truck. It's called Vintage Truck. I will leave all the transfers that I use today in the description box, as well as some information on how you can save with Chalk Couture or become a Club Couture member. So um, anyway, all of those were truck add-ons. So there's like leprechaun feet and a pot of gold, all kinds of stuff, flowers, um, farm fresh flowers, obviously this one says cupid farms with the hearts so there's a ton of spring add-ons in that one it is a huge transfer so anyway i cut out the ones that i wanted for my valentine's day truck and i take my pink as well as black chalk paste and i love the ombre effect kind of like tie-dye i just really think that it looks amazing and it stands out so i just put a couple dabs of each color here and there I take my squeegee and I squeegee that chalk paste off and then pull back and the magic appears I then took this little heart with X's and O's and I put that on the truck it also comes with these little ones that are actually for the front of the truck on the door there's four different ones so I obviously use the heart one to go with my sign I did the same exact thing for the hearts in the back of the truck and then I added two of the XO hearts on the side of the wording Next, I glue my truck down as well as the frame down. Now, when I'm gluing my frame down, I always start with the bottom piece and work my way up. That way, I know that it will fit together correctly because in a minute here, you're going to see just like everybody else. I tell you guys all the time, do not be afraid to make mistakes. I'm not the best at cutting these frame pieces down correctly. I usually always have a space at the top that I have to cut off, so it's no big deal. Just get your utility knife back out. You score that piece once again, and then it'll pop right off. You guys always tell me in the comments, thank you for showing me that it's okay to make mistakes. And you guys, that is the beauty of DIY. If you mess up, you can just fix it or start over. It's no big deal. And seasoned crafters, just like me, also make mistakes. So never get discouraged. I know you guys can do these projects because you guys are absolutely amazing. So that was it for that one. Look how high end this is, you guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys would pick this up in the store. And also, let me know in the comments who is your Valentine's who is your Valentine this year? Obviously, I have a ton of Valentines. My husband and my three kids. So moving on to this one, you guys, this is a close runner up. I love this sign so much. I can't decide if my favorite is the truck sign or this one or really the one at the end. I don't know. Per usual, I can never figure it out. So I take this little tray from Dollar Tree and give it a good coat of the ink Waverly chalk paint. I then took these half wooden i think they're called wooden buttons my friend shana from robison repurposing uses them all the time so check her out if you haven't seen her videos but i glue the wooden buttons all the way around the edges and then i give it another good coat of the ink waverly chalk paint now i did that on purpose because it's kind of hard to get down in the grooves once you've added the wooden buttons. So I like to paint my pieces first and then add them on. I've learned the hard way that it's a pain to try to get under there with your paint. I then took eight large popsicle sticks and I wanted this to kind of look like shiplap. Once I was done with the um, letters, you couldn't really tell the design I had back there anyway so just glue them down however you like but I did lay them out and cut them down to size and then I just used the same ones for templates and I cut those down to the same size as well. 
So once I had them cut, then I do give them all a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I then lay them out to make sure they are exactly where I wanted them because I did want to have spaces in between these. If not, then I would have had to cut one in half or two in half to fit that gap and I really didn't want to do that. So I just spaced them out. Uh, I wanted it to look like shiplap anyway, so it really wasn't a big deal. And then I glued them down with some hot glue after I had them exactly where I wanted them. Next, I take these letters that I got from Walmart for a dollar and some change a piece. I had them in my stash and knew that I wanted to use them before the Valentine's Day season was up. So, like a broken record, once again, I give these a light coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. I then take my Arteza acrylic paint. It was literally the perfect color and the perfect color scheme that I was going for. So I take the sticker off the back of this wooden heart from Dollar Tree and I give it two good coats of this acrylic paint. Once I had that done, then while the paint was still wet, I take a little bit on the end of my paintbrush with the Ink Waverly chalk paint and I just kind of it's not dry brushing because my brush was already wet, but that's kind of the look I was going for. Don't be stupid like me and put too much on the edge of your brush. I had to go back in with some more paint just to tone that black down, but no big deal. Like I said, I make mistakes just like you guys do, but just dab your brush off first. So once that was completely dry, then surprise, surprise, I go in with my Ink Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. I dry brush on the X, the O, the heart, as well as the shiplap in the back of our sign. So once I did that, then I dry brushed with some white Waverly chalk paint on the edges of the wooden buttons as well as the side walls of our sign wherever there was black. And I forgot to mention that I did take one of these little wooden stickers again from Dollar Tree, dry brushed the, the black onto it and then I glued it into the middle of our heart. Last but not least, I laid these out where I wanted them to go and then I took some hot glue and I just glued them down into place. Now, once I was done this, I really loved it, but I was looking at it and I'm like, dang it, it really looks like XOO, but I still loved it. I asked my friends, I said, do you guys like this? Because it looks like it looked it looks like XOO to me and I'm just not too sure, but it really does look nice up. You guys, I'm so indecisive. If you haven't figured that out already, I can never make a decision. I'm the worst. So let me know in the comments if you like the way this looks or if you think it looks weird and it looks like XOO. That was it for that one, you guys. I really do love the way that it turned out, even though it looks like that, but it looks high-end. I would definitely pick it up in the store, so I am so excited with the way it turned out. So moving on to our fifth and final project, I take this chomp dinosaur sign from Dollar Tree. My daughter loves dinosaurs, so she was kind of upset that I made this one over, but luckily I had an extra one that she could have. So I just took that uh, Ray's sign off. It was just a cheap piece of cardboard, really flimsy. So I did keep the part that was kind of keeping it popped off of the sign 
I took a piece of this heart scrapbook paper, I measured out and cut it down to size, and I took this wood piece from Dollar Tree, painted it white as well as I painted a border around the edges that way if the scrapbook paper didn't fit perfectly you couldn't see any of that black shining through now I did need to cut this wooden piece down from Dollar Tree it comes in a pack of like five I think they're called wooden planks but I did want to show you that you don't need a saw or anything special for this you guys I cut it down with a strong pair of scissors um, it did take a little bit of work, but it, it did cut pretty easily. So once I had all that done, I did just take the excess paint that was on my brush, the white, and I dry brushed around the border. And then I took my disappearing purple glue stick and I glued this scrapbook paper into our frame. So once that was done, then I took my chalk couture um, letter stencils and these are really nice because they have guides on them so you just line up the guide marks but I wanted mine a little bit more spaced out so I didn't use them but I did just um, transfer on the word kisses 25 and then I drew my own scent size since there was no scent sign in this pack of letters Again, I will leave this um, transfer in the description box. It will come as one sheet and then you just cut down the letters and the numbers. So when I drew my scent sign, I did just use my Arteza black paint pen. That link is also in the description box. I get a lot of questions about what paint pens I use because a lot of the times I don't use a Cricut or anything. I use like graphite paper and my paint pens. So I always get a lot of questions about those. So once I did all that, then I utilized those pieces, like I said, and I glue them to the back of our kisses sign. I then had this larger wooden heart. I, it was in a, a banner kit from Target. Sorry you guys, it's 1.30. It's actually 1.45 and I can't talk tonight. But <laughs> I take this little wooden heart that I got in a package. It was a banner from the Target dollar spot last year and a pink wooden heart from the same sticker pack from Dollar Tree that I have been using. And I once again use my chip brush and some Ink Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all the way around the edges of the hearts as well as all the way around the edges of my kisses sign. So last but not least, I just glue everything down. Now, if you don't like the placing of mine, you can switch this up, put the heart at the bottom. Although I don't know if it will look right because I feel like the kisses would be covering the shape of the heart, but play around with it, see how you like it. Oh, and I did um, just paint a small heart for the eye just to make it look all cohesive. And then that was it for that, you guys. Look how amazing these projects go with um, our projects from last week. If you have not seen that video, I will link it in the cards as well as at the end of the video. So make sure you check that out. Everybody loved that video and I loved it too. So anyway, thank you guys so, so much for stopping by. I love each and every one of you as I always say each week. If you would, please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And also subscribe if you haven't already. We would love for you to become part of the family. So my sweet, sweet friends, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I can't wait to catch you guys on Monday. So with all that being said, have a great weekend and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.